Hello everyone and welcome to another Stargate lore video. Today we're going to be talking about the Lantian Wraith War. I want to start off talking about the prelude, the how and why we got here. For those of you who need a quick reminder on where we are in the timeline, at this point the Ancients, or Lantians, had left the Milky Way galaxy and reselled in the Pegasus galaxy after a devastating plague. They had set up their own dominion in Pegasus and seeded many worlds with human life. Sadly, this dominion would not last forever when the day of war came. When it comes to the war itself, we sadly only really ever hear snippets and see the aftermath of things. When it comes to the actual start of the war, we do hear this from the Lantian perspective. Then one day our people set foot upon a dark world where a terrible enemy slept. Never before had we encountered beings with powers that rivaled our own. In our overconfidence, we were unprepared and outnumbered. This implies that the Lantians stumbled upon the Wraith and that the Wraith were equal in power. But the Wraith perspective paints something of a different picture. The Lantians were powerful but careless. Believing their ships were unbeatable, they sent them deeper and deeper into Wraith-controlled territory, trying to weed us out. It took months, but eventually we were able to capture three of them, each one powered by a ZPM. Within weeks, our army had grown to hundreds of times its original size. As Todd says, near the start of the war, the Lanteans held such an advantage they were able to enter Wraith territory nearly uncontested, and that the Wraith were nowhere near equals compared to the Lanteans. Although something both claims do have in common is they both claim that the Lanteans were overconfident and eventually outnumbered. But all this still doesn't really answer the question about how the war started. Well, this is where the books actually come in, and it has to do with the origin of the Wraith as a species. In the show, it was theorized that the Wraith had evolved from the Aratus bug as it began to feed on the humans and Lanteans in the Pegasus galaxy. Based on this origin, we can assume the war started as the Wraith began to feed on humans and Lanteans and the Lanteans tried to stop this. But the books portray a very different picture. In the books, we learn that the Wraith didn't evolve from the Aratus bug. In fact, they're not even a natural species. They're a created species, made by the Lanteans. The story goes that around 900 years before the start of the war, the Lanteans began to conduct experiments on the Aratus bug. While it was claimed this was done as a way to find an immunity for themselves against the Aratus bug, there was a higher chance this was done as a way to make themselves immortal if they could not ascend. And we would see this later on, as, as long as the Wraith have access to food, they could theoretically live forever. The Lanteans took 200 humans from across the Pegasus galaxy half of them males and the other half females, and began to experiment on them. In the end, only 99 men and 9 women were left. But they were no longer human. They had become the first of the Wraith. The Wraith used their telepathic powers to escape, taking the facility ZPM and weapons that were designed to kill anything with Wraith DNA. The first Wraith were hunted by the Lantians, who even tried to use the former human families of the Wraith to get them. This definitely changes the nature of the war, as now you can make the argument that the Wraith were maybe not the good guys, but justifying their actions through seeking to destroy a hostile enemy who wanted nothing less than their extinction, as well as the unethical experimentations that resulted in their creation. And I did find this one scene in the show that does support this claim that the Lanteans made the Wraith. And by your own admission, you are responsible for the emergence of the Wraith as a species. Though I do admit they could be talking about the putting humans on worlds with the Aratus bug, which eventually led to the natural evolution of the Wraith. Now this is where I may have to disappoint some of you. Similar to the prelude, we sadly know very little details about this war. We know major things, but details of battles, offensives, and even dates we know very little about. We know the war started around 8100 BC to 8000 BC, and lasted for about 100 years. Still, I want to try and make something of a timeline here. So I've created a series of phases we will go over. We've covered the Prelude phase, and now we're going to be moving on to the Lantean phase. We've covered a bit of this, but during this phase of the war, the Lanteans held the upper hand. Their technology was far superior to that of the Wraith who used organic technology. Specifically, the Lantean drone and shielding technology made a single ship of theirs a match for several hive ships. However, as Todd says, the Lanteans were powerful but careless. 
believing their ships to be unbeatable, they began to send them deeper and deeper into Wraith-controlled territory. Over the course of a few months, the Wraith managed to capture at least three ships, all of them powered using ZPMs. The Wraith used these extremely powerful sources of energy to power at least one cloning facility, and within weeks, the Wraith had grown the size of their original army to hundreds of times its original size. While the Lanteans still held the tech advantage and they could win almost any battle, there were just too many Wraith now. Going forward, the tide of war forever turned in favor of the Wraith, and the Lanteans could do almost nothing to stop them, though not for lack of trying. This leads to what I called the Wonderwaffle phase of the war. During this phase of the war, the Lanteans slowly began to fall back and lose territory to the Wraith in this new war of attrition. The Lanteans began to try and come up with some way, any way to beat back the Wraith. Being who they were, the Lanteans turned to their technology, Project Arcturus, an attempt to create a new power source to replace ZPMs, but ultimately led to the destruction of an entire civilization, and long after the war ended, the destruction of an entire solar system. Nanites that were meant to attack the Wraith at the cellular level, which led to a creation of something the Lanteans never wanted. Near the end of the war, the Lanteans built a device called the Dolmen, which disrupted the telepathic network among the Wraith and brought them great pain, eventually reducing them to an animalistic state. The Lanteans were forced to retreat from the planet the Dolmen was on after a battle with the Wraith in orbit, promising to return. They never did. The closest they ever came to a solution was the Atero device, which would cause any Wraith ship going to hyperspace to explode. But due to its side effect of causing stargates to explode, the project was abandoned as well. The creator of this device, Janus, would also go on to create a time machine, though this seemed to be a line the Lanteans were unwilling to cross, probably due to some past experience. During this time, the Lanteans continued to lose territory to the Wraith, with many battles taking place. One took place on the planet P7L-418, which was home to a Lantean laboratory for weapons development. They defended it with the full might of their fleet at the time, with at least six capital ships. In the end, they managed to defeat the Wraith, but in the aftermath, they were forced to retreat what was left of the fleet back to Atlantis. Many Aurora-class warships would be lost during this time. The Aurora, the Orion, the Avenger, the Traveler found Aurora-class ship, and presumably many others. The war continued for several years until all that was left of the Lantean Dominion was the Lantean system, home of Atlantis. And one final desperate hope in an attempt to end the war, the Lanteans sent a delegation to meet with the Wraith to negotiate a truce. The delegation was protected by the most powerful warships the Lanteans had left, but they were ambushed by a massive Wraith fleet. Now defeat was only a matter of time. The Siege Years For the final several years of the war, the Lanteans managed to keep the Wraith out of the Lantean system thanks to the weapon satellites throughout the system, but over time the Wraith were able to destroy most of them and move on to Atlantis. At first, Atlantis's powerful shield and drone weapons kept the Wraith at bay, but no matter how many ships they destroyed, the Wraith just kept coming. Eventually the drone supply dwindled and the shield was under constant bombardment. The Lanteans decided to sink the city, as this would allow the shield to hold far longer than it could on the surface under bombardment. With Atlantis and the Lanteans brought to their knees, they knew it was over. The Council made the decision to recall any Lanteans left in the Pegasus Galaxy. They would return through the Stargate back to the Milky Way. However, before they left, due to some time travel shenanigans, they would leave with both the knowledge and the hope that one day, their kind would return. After the last transport was destroyed by the Wraith, they returned to Earth, where they found the primitive peoples and the hard lands. With no real hope of rebuilding their civilization, some decided to breed with the humans, passing on the ATA gene to help create many of Earth's early civilizations. Others decided to go off and find a way to ascend. It should be known that not all Lanteans made it back to Atlantis in time for the final evacuation. The most famous instance of this was that of the Lantean warship Tria. After a battle with Wraith cruisers, they were heading back to Atlantis when they received word that the final evacuation was in progress. They decided to head back to Earth through the void between the galaxies, but at some point their hyperdrive failed and they were forced to travel as close to life speed as possible for the rest of the trip, where they wouldn't be found until thousands of years later by the Earth ship Daedalus. As I said earlier, there were other accounts and reports of Lanteans living on in the Pegasus galaxy after the war, but those are stories for another time. Aftermath 
With the Lanteans gone, the Wraith got to work setting up their own dominion, destroying any civilization they could find with advanced technology so no one could challenge their supremacy, such as the Vanir. And they began their cullings, when they would feed on the now defenseless humans of the Pegasus Galaxy, leaving just enough to repopulate before going into hibernation. The only true threat to their power after this would be the Assyrians, the replicators created by the Lanteans who survived their parents' attempted genocide, now returned to destroy the Wraith to fulfill their programming. After the Wraith shut down the code making the Assyrians attack the Wraith, the Wraith would continue on the feeding cycle, until almost 10,000 years later when a group of explorers returned to the ancient city of Atlantis. But that's another story to tell. Thoughts. The Lantean Wraith War is considered one of the biggest events in the Stargate universe. It marked the final death of the ancient civilization after a history of being driven out of three galaxies. First by their brothers, then by a plague, and finally by a mistake of their own actions. There's also a theme brought up in this war quite often, that the Lanteans are somehow to blame for their own downfall, either by creating the Wraith through experimentation or by accident and their overconfidence early in the war leading to them being careless and ultimately led to the Wraith gaining the advantage. The idea that the Wraith were created through Atlantean experimentation is an interesting idea. It would explain why the Wraith wanted to destroy the Lanteans with such a passion beyond just the need to feed. In the end, the Lantean Wraith War is another lesson for those to be learned of the fifth race. And hopefully they or us don't make the same mistakes. That's it. That's the story. But the picture is pretty clear. So you think this is an open situation? No, sir. What I mean is, even if we beat them this time, they're going to come back. <laughs>